You are a wonderful soul. There isn't anything that you can't do. You are amazing as you are gifted and talented way beyond compare. You are a lovely person. You have a heart that is radiant in beauty. You have a lot of love to give because you are love. And I'm sorry that you are underappreciated. I am sorry that you don't hear that you are valuable enough. And I'm sorry that others do not see your beauty and show you that you are a beautiful soul. Beautiful things might be hard to hear, yes? It might be hard to believe that you are worthy of living a joyful life, as it's hard to believe that you can be all you want to be in this life. I know you want to be abundant in talent and intelligence, and you already are, as you already are love and joy, but why isn't life giving to you what you want? It comes down to belief, my friends. And I can tell you what you want to hear, but unless you believe it for yourself, you won't believe it from anybody. You won't believe me even though I know you. I know who you are already without knowing you. I know because we have all been given the same emotional foundation. What's in me is in you. And I have a gift for you today in this video. I want to give to you the way to establish a pattern of belief in you. I want to gift to you because you have gifted to me. You all loved me before I even loved myself. You have all helped me to see who I am even before I saw this for myself. You helped me and I am so very grateful. I love you and I can truly say this because you helped me to love myself. So in this video, I'd like to share with you a piece of my heart. I'd like to give you back the love that you have given me. I'd like to help you establish the love within you for yourself. And all it takes is spending about a half an hour or so with me in this video and then dedicating about 10 minutes, about 10 minutes every day to do some light meditation that will guide and help you. I know that this will help you because it helped me and I'm confident that it's going to help you. I'm, I'm excited. I had no idea that years of researching and trying to figure out the hidden laws of God backed up with the hidden laws of science would actually help me to discover something so simplistic and really should take little effort, but because of our childhood trauma, it's anything but easy. For me, when I read that God wants us to get back to our roots, those roots of becoming the state of being like a child and having a child height and having a childlike heart again, well, that was really difficult for me to discover. And that's hard to do when many of us are stuck in our childhood trauma and we've been traumatized by fear. Turns out the simplest answer is often the right one. And you don't have to look very far beyond yourself to reflect on what exactly it means to be childlike. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I encourage you to just detach yourself from childhood and learn from the childlike perspectives that are around you as you see children in real life they can teach us a thing or two about what living life abundantly really means. The one thing that I noticed in observing children is that a child is naturally dependent on their parent. The child is naturally trusting and they form a bond with their parents as the child is dependent on their parents, not for their surroundings, for support, help, and protection. See, us adults, we depend on our surroundings for our support, help, and protection, instead of turning to us to become our own self-parent, as children need parents for guidance. 
Now, a child who latches onto a blanket for secure. Now, a child who latches onto a blanket for security. Well, they're not using the blanket itself as security, but in reality, it's more perhaps like this: that the child finds security in that blanket because one or both of their parents gave that blanket to them, so they find worth in that blanket. The child has a memory that they initially will soon forget. And so the blanket becomes a replacement for when their parent is not there. The child hangs onto the blanket as a replacement to feel that security and safety when they are in the absence of their parents. Another thing that I've noticed in observing children is that a child wakes up with a fresh new day. How many of us adults wake up and just, oh, another day, but a child who, they're naturally detached from the day before, and they have to be reminded of what happened that day before. A child wakes up with an innocence, like their moment of waking up is a new day, a first day, because it is. The child doesn't reflect on, oh gee, I gotta go to kindergarten again today. I don't know how to tie my shoes yet, what's the deal? No, they don't even think about, oh, I have to clean my room today. They wake up and if they see their toys on the floor, they're like, oh, let's play smash up cars. Or if they find their teddy bear on the floor, they make up a story of how their teddy bear fell on the floor and they have to reach for their teddy bear without falling off the bed because the floor is lava. Children are just creative like that. And it's amazing for us adults, if we have the ability to tap into that, we'll see life with so much more possibilities. Children actually create their day with the feelings that are there, with the feelings that they generate. You want to know why a child has so much energy? It's because they're radiating energy and keeping that energy alive through their creative minds built on their moods. Your feelings create thoughts and thoughts create feelings. Now a child, they're innocently playing their role in life, not caring about what is right and what is wrong. The moral structure of a child comes from the teachings of the parents. That's the parent's responsibility. And any choice the child makes outside of that moral choice, well, that's the child's to make. They explore their choices. Ever notice how a child has no fear? That's because they're not thinking, what's in that puddle? If I step in it, I'm gonna get dirty. No. Instead, they want to see if they can stomp on that puddle and make it dry. They jump in with both feet as hard as they can and they get wet. They don't care. They see the water pattern displacement and they don't care the science behind that. They're not mindful of what makes those patterns, how that happens. They are just living in their sense of wonder of wow. Look at that! Look how far the water went! I did that! Mom, come see! I made the water splash! And what do you know? The mom comes over and she's not splashing in the puddle with their, her child. Instead, she's telling the child to get out of the water because she's going to get dirty. The child's going to get dirty. The child is ruining their new clothes. The child isn't mindful like that. Kids are not mindful as they are not malicious in their creativity. The only thing that growing up was actually supposed to teach us is how to become responsible in our creativity. We were supposed to retain our creativity from childhood to adulthood. And we as adults can still jump in that puddle if we want to. We can still say, oh, wow, I did that. I made the water jump out of the puddle. But now that we're mature, we don't call our mothers to come see. We don't call out our friends and force them to come into the puddle and jump with us. 
We don't want to include people in our creative moments if they don't want to. We are mature in our adulthood enough to know that we can invite them and it's their choice to accept our invitation as it's our as it's our responsibility to respect their boundaries. Now, science can show us that humans all alike radiate energy. Children radiate a large amount of energy. And as we age, we still radiate a large amount of energy, but it's just different. It's slower. It's a slower state of radiating. The rate of something vibrating or moving is known as frequency. So children and adults, we radiate energy at a different frequency. But that's not to say that adults and children alike cannot radiate the same frequency. Humans naturally become synchronous with each other in their environment, as we can even synchronize ourselves to animals. When two people are sharing the same environment, science shows that it's the weaker frequency that harmonizes itself with the stronger frequency. What happens is the two people start radiating the same frequency through the heart-mind synchronization pattern called coherence. We can have coherence with people and our environment and the animals in the same way. That's why taking a walk in nature allows us to become synchronized with the radiating energy from nature and we feel in a state of peace. That's why we feel so calm and relaxed and energized around nature and animals. What we do not realize is that humans, as with all life, are energetic beings. What science calls energy, the Bible calls spirit. And our senses, our biological senses, are sensitive to the spirit, nature, to pick up the different types of spirit, such as sight and sound. Now, energy is all around us. It's in the air that we breathe. The environment we walk in, as we are made up of energy, as we generate energy through eating and moving our bodies. Our heart beats naturally, creating energy just by the heartbeat alone. And the heartbeat pushes the blood through our veins and this causes something amazing to happen. This creates a pressure wave, a sonic wave, that circulates through our blood and each time it is cycled through our blood and cycled through our heart, another sound wave is generated. And that generation, and that generation creates a larger wave that naturally emanates from our bodies. I'd like you to do just a little experiment with me right now. Put your hand only a few inches from your heart. Do you feel the heat? If you concentrate by closing your eyes and imagine an energy exchange between your heart and your hand, you might feel a slight variation. It might feel like a pulsing sensation of heat exchanging from your heart, and you can feel that on your hand. Now, science shows that this emanation of our hearts it exists in front of us, all around us, above us, below us, at least eight feet or more from our bodies. And it is the pause between each heartbeat that is also emanated out of our bodies. Think of a, um, when you throw a rock in a pond and you get that rippling effect. That's what's happening here. Your heartbeat is generating a rippling effect that emanates out of your body and in between the pause states, That is where your emotions reside. So this is how you are able to feel or sense impending doom or feel or sense when an animal is friendly or feel or sense when somebody, a coworker or somebody in your area of space is somebody that you want to get to know or somebody that you just rather not know. For example, have you ever noticed when someone you have never met 
but she passed by them in a crowded room or even along a corridor of some kind. Yeah, felt a weird vibe from them. Well, this is your heart's electromagnetic frequency clashing with theirs. And what you feel is a biofeedback that tells you to stay away because their energy frequency is not in congruence or in sync with yours. So now that you know that your heart radiates an energy field, an electromagnetic energy field that's at least eight feet in front of your bodies, next time you go out, pay attention to this because you might be feeling something that you ignore because, oh, nobody's there, I can't see anything. It's your energy, your spirit that is going before you. As God says, the Holy Spirit goes before us. Well, your energy from your heart is going before you and it acts as a protective barrier as when you catch up to your energy field in that area, you'll sense, ooh, something, somebody was here, ooh. You don't want to follow that bad energy it, that you sense. Now, your heart is not the only area of your body where you generate electricity. Your heart produces an electromagnetic field and your brain produces an electric one. You have five brain wave patterns that are electric in design that are known by these names, the alpha, the beta, the delta, the gamma, and the theta. These are generated while you sleep. Sleep is extremely important for the body because these electrical brainwave patterns help an individual to not only physically grow, but also to produce hormones and a mental state that allows for cohesion and coherence to help retain information and learn. And also sleep allows an individual to spiritually grow there's something else that you need to know. Your intestines also have the same electrical receptors that are in your brain that are also in your heart. Now these, are, these energy receptors are known as neurons and they communicate with the neurons in your brain and in your heart. The brain allows the five brain waves to travel along your body through the nervous system and your nervous system is connected to everything your heart, your body systems, such as your stomach and even your intestines. So you, my friend, you are a generator and you are a battery. And if you want to know what that looks like, all you have to do is just imagine a magnet with iron filings placed around that long magnet and you see a specific pattern. You are the magnet and the energy that emanates from you produces an electromagnetic field. It's hard to see this in your mind from a 2D perspective, so I'd like to introduce to you the ferro lens. This is an optical device that allows you to see the magnetic field of a magnetic of a magnet in real time. You place ferro fluid between two pieces of glass and place it on a magnet. The result will show you in interesting fields of patterns. This is a simplistic version as this allows us to see a 3D reality of what the field around a magnet in its perimeter looks like. A ferro lens allows us to see the entire dimensions of the magnetic field around a magnet. This example shows us that the magnet is the center of a toroid. The magnet is the vortex as the field of the magnetic forces are generated by a pulling in and pushing out of the vortex, forming a donut-like shape around the magnet. And this is you. You are the vortex of the toroidal or donut shape. The energy patterns that form from within you emanate out from the vortex on, on what is called magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines can be weak or strong. The closer these lines are together, the stronger the magnet. The further the lines are apart from each other, this denotes the weaker the magnet. How weak or strong your magnetic field is, well, that's up to you, as the strength of your magnetic flux is determined by your thoughts and feelings. Because if you can think of yourself as a magnet, because that is what you are, 
you will come to understand that the fundamental building blocks of creation that are in you are in everything. The only difference between you and the computer or phone that you are watching this video from is that you are a natural source of consciousness. The mechanisms that you are using are not. The difference between you and the chair you're sitting on is that you have consciousness. The chair does not. Both you and the chair have fundamental elements that make up the foundation of your being. You are made from the elements of the earth, just like the chair is, just like your laptop is, just like your phone is. If we break down creation into its fundamental forms, God tells us that mankind was created from the dust of the ground. What is earth? The soil. What's in it? All life is dependent on the nutrients of the earth in minute amounts. We are dependent on things such as iron, copper, sulfur, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, and other nutrients that are found in the soil. Without these, we cannot survive as our bodies begin to degenerate and decay. Your chair may be made out of wood or plastic or a combination of the two. Maybe it's even made out of metal. The fundamental elements found in soil or harvested from rock are found in your chair. And some of those fundamental elements are also found in all life. What makes the body different from the chair is the way those chemicals and elements bond together. And if we reverse engineer the chair and the human body even further, we come to find that the atomic structures, the basic building blocks of life in all things are the same. An atom with a nucleus that contains protons, electrons, and other various subatomic structures. So, Let's concentrate on the electron for a minute because the electrons are the power sources of this, the atomic structure. Electrons are what bind atomic structures together to form specific molecules. So when we see our environment around us from this perspective, we are all made from the same source, atoms. Your computer, your car, your chair, your phone, your light, your, your desk, your bed, your blankets, my glasses, your clothes, everything is made from the same building blocks, atomic structures. So when you look at the atom and break down its components, you will find that there are little tiny, teeny energy packets that form the electron. Because how the electron actually gains its energy is by absorbing photons. Photons are packets of light. The electron can actually absorb the photon to use it as energy, or the electron can actually release the photon, the energy in the photon, to create a photon. So what this all means is this is how the atom forms what we call matter. This is in its simplest description, of course. We're not doing Science 101 here. And what this can tell us is that although matter seems to be a steady solid state, the atomic structure is not solid. The atomic structure holds things together through a frequency of vibration that we can see and feel if it's big enough. The chair that you are sitting on is in a stagnant state. However, the individual atomic structure itself that makes up the plastic, the metal, the wood structure that makes a seat for you to sit on is actually vibrating at a very low frequency and that's why you can't see it or feel it. Your chair appears to be a solid mass and for all intents and purposes it is, but subatomically it's not. If we could see the atomic structure of the chair in its infinite or finite intricate magnification, we would see the spaces between the atoms and we would see the atoms moving in their area of placement. They would be moving in place. So I'm going somewhere with this, so please just bear with me. 
I have a gift for you, a meditation, if you are willing, that will help you to reconnect with you, to yourself. And I wanted to give you some background of hidden detail as this will help you understand and help you absorb the meditation itself as this detail that I just shared with you will help you get in the flow and take charge of your life. In this meditation, I'm going to ask you to reflect on things that you hold dear. These items are tangible for you that have meaning. Understanding that the items you can see, feel, and touch are made up of the same fundamental creational building blocks that you are made out of helps you to understand that the items that you place value in can absorb a memory of ownership, as this will help you to understand the fundamental principle that separates you from those objects of value, your feelings. Feelings are a vibration that when agitated to a heightened state, produce good feelings. And when the vibration of those feelings are low, they produce bad feelings. Bad feelings, bad feelings produce a low vibrational field from you and good feelings hold a, high, hold a high vibrational field from you. Your feelings attached to things have a direct effect on their use and longevity. Have you ever been handed down heirloom items that even though they are used and they're old, even if they're seldomly used, they still retain their luster and look many generations later? Just like someone who walks by you and your energy field does not match theirs and you feel it, the energy field absorbed by those you hold dear to you stays synchronized to you. Life and death is in the power of the tongue cursing things that you once held dear, you take back your energy field from that. And that is what starts the natural process of decay. What once didn't rust because of your attention held on that thing? Now slowly the paint chips away and rust begins to eat at the metal. Negative feelings in us degrade our energy in the same way. You are a battery, a generator, and a magnet all at the same time. You store energy. Energy is generated from you as you repel and attract things to you based on your feelings. Your feelings are the generator. Your thoughts store these feelings as memories, real or imagined, and you emanate your feelings out to allow life to give to you the life experience that you feel. You feel what you want, and most of us are in trauma. We are feeling what we don't want, but can't feel what we do want because we don't know how to generate that feeling of goodness, what we want. Our energy is low, and our magnetism is weak. This meditation will help you, as this meditation will help you to regain and remember your childlike wonder in life again. So I've given you enough understanding to help you in this guided meditation. So if you are ready, please find a comfortable spot and just listen to my voice. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Take a deep breath in and exhale. 
With every breath you take in, imagine the air is energized. With every breath you exhale out, imagine stale air leaving you. Like your blood, your breathing is also a circulatory process. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Allow your body to just relax. Your breathing is meant to relax you and ground you to a sense of peace. Imagine with your breath the circulatory process of cycled energy. Breathe in and the air around you that you inhale becomes energized. As the air you are breathing enters your body, it becomes more energized as your lungs fill up. Hold that energy in your lungs for a few seconds. Imagine the energy also traveling up to your brain. Exhale. And imagine your body holding on to the energy and circulating down throughout your body and out the soles of your feet. When you inhale, the energy at your feet circulates up around your body, picking up energy from your emanating energy from your heart. Your body constantly radiates energy. This is known as heat and light that is not seen to your naked eye. As you breathe in, the energy circulates and grows your pre-existing energy as it becomes more radiant and stronger. Energy is never stagnant. With each breath you now feel your body react to this energy. You are one with your energy. This energy is you. It always has been. It is with you all the time. Energy is who you are. The energy you breathe is stored in your cells as it's used by every fiber of your being. Your thoughts give this energy meaning. So be kind to this energy by lending kind thoughts to this energy. Lend kind thoughts to yourself. As you breathe in and exhale, Align your energy to the earth by softly humming OM. Take a deep breath in and on your exhale, speak OM in a long, drawn out, gentle breath. Imagine your surroundings and look at the items that you favor. Look at the energy patterns in that room. The things you favor are attached to you because you have your thoughts invested in those items of your choice. Your energy has mingled with the items of this energy through your thoughts and your intentions. It is the intent in your energy that holds these items where they are and allows them to function. The item may appear solid, but it is made with the same fundamental energies as you. You and the solid states of energy around you are just on different frequencies that hold your unique shapes. Remember how you felt when the item of your focus was brand new. That feeling has never gone away. It is only weakened, and this is called energy decay. So to strengthen your feelings about having this item, think of the gratitude you felt when you first brought that item into your home. Allow yourself in this moment to rekindle the joy 
the gratitude and the personal feelings you felt. These feelings were the gift to you, not the item itself. So stay with those feelings, embody those feelings, let those feelings circulate in the energy pattern through your breathing. Breathe in and out. Feel gratitude vibrate in your cells. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel love in your heart for yourself and for the things that you enjoy. Breathe in and out. Feel appreciated, you have been gifted these things. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel the joy become who you really are. Breathe in and breathe out.
this joy is here to stay and you are one with peace, joy, and love always because your breathing, your natural breathing makes it so. Whenever you are worried or distressed in life, center yourself and simply inhale and exhale and reflect on your breathing and reflect on the feeling as your body is one always with the energy that you breathe. This strengthens with each guided breath. What feeling you give this energy is always your choice. You enjoy being in a state of gratefulness and love always. When you are stressed, just return to this state by breathing, simply by focusing and listening to yourself. Inhale, and exhale. The energy that enters you as you breathe becomes you. It is you. You were made with the same substance that you breathe. Focus your thoughts on good things. Your body holds on to memories of the past. Allow your body to retain good, loving intentions as that is what your body becomes. You become peace, love, and joy with every breath. And that becomes unconsciously stronger with each breath. Now focus on what you currently desire holding on to the feelings of gratefulness of the things that you have just given thought to. Notice how the feelings have not changed. You are still grateful. You are still joyful. You are still feeling secure. You are still free. You feel secure in the item that you want. This is because your cells are radiating energy that is already in the state of love, joy, security, and freedom. What you want and desire is only going to add to your current state. Be joyful and thankful for what you want because your feelings are telling you, you already have it. Focus on your value. Take in that joy and stay grateful by breathing in and out. I am thankful for the items that I desire. I am thankful as it adds to my joy. I am grateful as it empowers me. I am joyful as I feel free. I am free. I am worthy. I am abundant. I am grateful. I am loved. I am loving. I am joy. I am so grateful and I am so humbled because I feel all these things. I am abundant in my feelings. These are gifts to me by the Spirit. Thank you for my gifts. I am a gift. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for gifting to me what I need and desire. Thank you. Bless you, Lord. Bless me and bless others as we are all blessed. Breathe in and out. Allow the thoughts and your feelings to follow you throughout your day. No one can take away your joy. All you need to do is to remember. Focus on your breathing and you will remember who you are. You are love, peace, joy, and you are grateful. The people you interact with when you stand before the negative energy from others just maintain your distance and focus your breathing. Your breathing is your protection 
as you center your thoughts by remembering who you are and remaining in who you are. This is your protection as this keeps you protected from negative feelings as this energetic pattern circulates inside and outside of your body forming a toroidal pattern that is energetically and magnetically encapsulating you to protect you in peace, joy, and harmony from above. Remember where there is peace, joy, and love, Jesus is there also. You too are one with him. We love you. Go in peace. I just want to say thank you for participating. I feel overjoyed and happy for you. If you repeat this meditation when you wake up and when you go to sleep, if you have time, repeat this meditation every hour or as often as you can throughout the day. This will help you to get into the flow state of just being as your feelings become the state of who you are, as you attract who you are, not what you want. I love you and I truly hope you enjoy this gift. Blessings.